So playing Atlanta basically is like playing the ultimate light cruiser. You have no armor, you have no range, you have horribly floaty arcs, but you have pretty insane DPM for your tier, and you get a radar. Um, so a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about will apply to most light cruisers in the game, but most of those other ones will be able to play more open water a little bit easier. So if you're looking for a more open water style on how to play a light cruiser, just go look at my Wooster video that I put up a few days ago. It was on ocean, so there's nowhere for me to hide. But light cruisers love islands, as we all know. So that's why I just went to the side of the map that I spawned at, and I'm trying to use an island to cover myself while I arc shells over onto the enemy. That's basic positioning for a light cruiser. There's plenty of spots on most maps where you can do this. Now, our destroyer doesn't find anything yet, so I'm going to push up. Um, and he finds a cruiser, finally, and I want to support him because, well, he's going to get smashed. <laughs> so we need to turn this guy away. And I know light cruisers often use HE most of the time, but it's their AP can be pretty solid. Um, you just got to hit superstructure and upper belts. You can see like 3,500 damage there. Now, it's better to shoot HE when they're angled, obviously. We only get 1,500 that time. But Atlanta, specifically, is all about learning the aim. I haven't played this ship for a while, so I'm going to be kind of relearning it as I play this one. But if you are used to the arcs and used to how it plays, I mean, this ship can deal some nasty, nasty damage to targets. It is a really, really, really strong cruiser. The main thing you're looking for are targets of opportunity. So... The main targets you want to go after are potentially cruisers at close range that are kind of caught out or trying to farm ships as they push into you and mainly you're going to try and do that from behind an island. So positioning is key in a ship like Atlanta and that's why you're going to see me constantly trying to use islands for cover as I'm playing this game. Now which islands are good for Atlanta? Basically all of them because the arcs are so floaty but the higher tier light cruisers generally don't quite have this kind of floaty arcs, so it'll be a little bit trickier. But you can play quite aggressive in these ships sometimes, and you're going to see me do that here. I know that this Surrey is caught out right now. He's stuck in a gap, and there's none of his teammates around. So because Atlanta has such crazy high DPM, I actually can out-trade this guy here, and I'm very, very confident pushing into this. So... The nice thing is we also have a radar so we can find out where he's at. Um, usually you'd want to use your radar on a destroyer, but I'm using it to make sure that the Surrey isn't going to um, necessarily push me super hard or I just want to see what he's doing basically to make a more informed decision. Oftentimes you'll see me do that with radar. Um, you'll see later on that I use it and I don't find anything, but that was the whole point was that I was hoping that nothing would be around so that I could make a safer turn. Um, Getting information is crucial to playing a light cruiser. I think that it's one of the biggest things that helps you play your light cruiser is situational awareness. That You need massive situational awareness in order to play a light cruiser effectively. Because you are so squishy, especially at mid-tier, because you don't have a heal. At higher tier, it's a lot easier because you can get smashed, and then you got like four heals to come back with, you know? Uh, assuming you don't get dev struck. It's really these mid-tier ones that really teach you how to play a light cruiser effectively, but not too aggressively kind of thing. But you can kind of poke on islands. I, I'll, you'll see me do this a lot when I play uh, my light cruisers. I'll try and isolate 1v1s. It's very similar to a battleship, actually, where you're trying to isolate 1v1s with people. You don't want to take on multiple targets at once. But in this case, you know, we're trying to keep the island between us and the Algerie and the Colorado. But we can kill this Surrey right here. Now, I was hoping for him to, for him to be broadside, because AP smashes people in broadsides. I was kind of surprised this guy didn't get citadeled, but I guess I didn't really fully understand how thick a Surrey belt is. But you can see the HE is just disgusting. Our DPM is nasty, nasty, nasty with this stuff. <laughs> when you full pen, that's the thing, right? These are, these are essentially American destroyer guns. This is essentially what they are. So they have very little pen. And I actually use IFHE on them to boost their pen to hopefully pen cruisers and some battleships too. Well, superstructures at least. 
it's very, very handy to have. Um, there are arguments to be made for other builds. I'll go over those at the end, what the build I use is. But there are other builds that you can use. Concealment primarily is one of them that um, I'm not using right now. But you definitely could, and probably should. It'll make it easier to play this ship. Now, you'll notice that I leave this flank here. Decision making early is really critical for a light cruiser. The reason we're leaving is nobody's pushing on this flank except our team, right? The enemy team is running. And an Atlanta is at its worst in open water chasing someone. That's probably the worst play you can possibly make in Atlanta. So we're leaving. There's just no point in us staying here. We'll get a few closing sh parting shots on the Colorado, but these won't hit because he's just so far away. The arcs are just absolutely insane at these ranges. So we know that their team is strong on the other side, so that's where we're going to go. We're just going to try and stop them from pushing into our cap. That's essentially what's happening. Um, just something to note, you're going to notice eventually uh, the in-game chat start to get a little spicy. <laughs> Some people are pretty funny in this game. Um, yeah, but chasing into a cruiser and a battleship is probably one of the dumbest things you can possibly do. The best thing for an Atlanta player is to make sure you're supporting your team and you're doing that from a safe spot. The biggest mistake I make, and I see other people make too, with light cruisers is they play too aggressively off the start. Your ship is so good late game when there's very few ships left because there's less to worry about, there's less crossfires, all these things, so then it's just a pure DPM fight, and cruisers are the best in those kind of fights. You just need to play cautious, even if you don't really do much for the first 10 minutes, right? Like, we only have 30k damage in the first, you know, 8 minutes of the game. So, that's not, uh, that's not bad, you know, but it's not like this amazing damage farming total. And that's fine, because we have all our health left, and the enemy team is pushing, so... Playing cautiously to start, while also supporting your team, is really good. You know, I don't think that playing hyper-aggressively at the beginning to try and get damage is the best thing to do ever, really, in a light cruiser. That's more of a heavy cruiser, or even just like gunboat destroyer type of play style, if you're looking for that kind of thing. Uh, most other ships just kind of die. Now... You'll notice that there are two DDs left on the enemy team. Well, three actually, but there's two in the middle, essentially. And this is a really, really risky play I'm making. Um, I would, in hindsight, say you should go behind the island to my right. Because if I get caught here and that Colorado pops a spotter plane, for example, uh, that might not end well for me. But I'll, so I'll angle to him. And we actually end up catching the Maas, or the uh, Mahan with our destroyer, so that's pretty nice. And this is really what the Atlanta's amazing at. It crushes destroyers. <laughs> it's, it is so disgustingly good against DDs, um, assuming you can aim. At these ranges, it's a little tricky to aim, as you can see, but just being in an area where you can support your destroyer is, is huge. Now here, you're gonna see me play the more classic Atlanta playstyle here. The enemy. T this is what you're. This is what you're looking to do. By the way, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for enemy teams to pushing in, and island cover for you to shoot over. And you'll notice it takes very little island cover to, or you can you can shoot over massive islands that most people can't shoot over because of the arcs on this ship. It's 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 really nice for situations like this, where you can play nice and safe. It is a little bit risky to be here in the middle of the map, by the way, <laughs> but we're not getting lit yet, so it's okay. And there you can see, I can, I'm apparently reported and banned to follow. <laughs> it's funny. It's a funny video game, don't you think? Um, now, positioning-wise, this is a bad position. Um, because my only way to escape is through this gap, and two battleships are pushing towards this gap. This is a really, really bad play. It's fine for now because, well, nobody's spotting me, but eventually I will have to leave here. So what I should be doing is I should be reversing and then trying to turn out to the right and get behind um, the island behind me. That should be my goal at this point. 
and, you know, just slowly working my way back through the islands as, as the enemy team pushes in. But, you know, mistakes can be made and you can get away with it, but like I do in this game, I end up getting away with it, but that doesn't mean it's the correct play. The correct play would definitely be to be retreating a little bit more and uh, getting myself in a safer spot. Your goal in a cruiser, and well, any ship really, you never want to get caught where you're right next to an island that's behind you and there's an enemy ship in front of you. So this is going to be a perfect example of this. The, there's an island behind me preventing me from turning out and there's two battleships in this case that could shoot me. So I am limited in my movement here because I can't turn out, otherwise I ground and I just guaranteed die. I might not die to the first shot, but I'm just guaranteed dead. So I have to risk just staying broadside. Now, fortunately, the enemy battleships, I have no idea why he didn't shoot me. I guess maybe the low health, or I don't know, they went after the destroyer for whatever reason. I, I'll take it, right? But this is a bad play by me. This is a really, really, really bad play. Um, so you never, ever, ever want to find yourself in a position like that. Now I'm safe because I can turn and I can maneuver freely, but you never, ever, ever want to do that. And that's something that I got lucky with. I should have died here. This is a really, really bad play. Um, and in fact, I do a poor job of even dodging that charm horse, but we get lucky with overpens. That's the way light cruisers are. Sometimes you just get really lucky with overpens. Um, I wouldn't count on it in a ship like Atlanta. You kind of can. Um, ships like Smolensk specifically are really good for it because at tier 10, people have way higher pen and uh, your ship is basically the size of an Atlanta at tier 10. So that's why it's a lot better. Atlanta, you can face some lower tier battleships with slower shells and uh, lower pen values. So it's more likely the shells will stay in your Citadel and not just over pen. So that's why it's a little more risky to just show broadside in an Atlanta compared to a ship like Smolensk. Um, but that's a good thing, to be clear. Uh, I think it's really dumb that you can... The, the best play for a ship like Smolensk is to show flat broadside to a battleship. Because they'll just overpin. I think that's really poor game design. But it's in the game, so you may as well use it when, uh, when the time arises. But you'll see that I can open water a bit now. And that's because... There are fewer ships on the table, and there's less for me to worry about. I'm essentially only worried about the Ashtaka and the Algeria in the middle. Um, you'll see that I popped radar. This is what I was talking about. I popped radar to make sure that that destroyer was not within, what is it, 8.5 kilometers of me. He has 8-kilometer torps, so my thought process there was, okay, I'm going to make a turn out here. I don't want to get caught by these torpedoes. Well, I don't have hydro right now, so... If I radar, then I know he's not within torpedo range of me. That was my thought process. And, you know, turned out it was a safe turn after all. But there are, even if you don't have hydro, there are ways of making sure that you're not going to get torped, basically. Now, it's possible he torped me and then ran out of my radar range, sure. But it did, for the most part, make me think that I was going to be safe here. You'll notice that we lost... Um, a little bit of HP. Atlanta hates fighting uh, heavy cruisers. Most light cruisers hate fighting heavy cruisers. The reason being, their arcs are way worse. Sure, they probably have a DPM advantage, so at close range it's not too bad, but their arcs are worse and their pen is worse. So, hypothetically, I don't take IFHE. I can't pen his... Uh, I'm pretty sure I can't pen his um, deck or just ship's armor. I have to hit his, hit his superstructure. Whereas a heavy cruiser can always pen anywhere on my ship, basically, with his AG. So that's why taking fights against heavy cruisers, especially at range, is just a bad idea. Now here, I get spotted by the destroyer because we don't have concealment, basically. And I would die here if, uh, if my team didn't bail me out. That's why <laughs> I'm like, kill him, kill him, kill him! <laughs> I'm like doing the quick command or whatever to uh, focus that target, because I can't shoot him, because he's outside of my range even. But Atlanta's a fun ship. If you haven't played it for a while, definitely check it out. It's a really, really good time. It's a challenge, but it's a very rewarding challenge, I think. Um, 
it's it's one of those ships that I don't think is overpowered, but it's incredibly strong if you can play it correctly. It's super weak if you make a mistake though. <laughs> It, it's like it's like uh, tightrope walking or being on a knife's edge, and I love it for that reason. I don't play it very much because tier seven, as we all know, tends to get tier nine. I've I just got lucky with a tier seven game here, but yeah, it was it was a good time playing playing a game like this. And there you go, the torpedoes come in and scared me for sure. Definitely scared me, <laughs> but it all ended up okay. Now you'll notice I'm a little twitchy this game, more so than my battleship games. Um, I'm sorry if that's uh, a little more difficult to watch, but playing a light cruiser, um, especially one without a heal, requires you to constantly be looking around. So what you'll see me do when I'm shooting, but also looking around, that's actually just holding right click. That gives you free look, is what it's called. And that basically lets you continue your aim to stay where it is, but you can just turn your camera wherever you want to. And then if you just keep holding mouse one, you'll keep firing where, you're, where you were last aiming. So you, said, you see it says free look. It's very handy for ships like a light cruiser to know how to dodge and positioning yourself while still shooting. I think that situational awareness is the biggest thing that Atlanta requires. And if you're looking to get better at situational awareness, this ship is a good one to play, I think. Um, it'll be hyper punishing if you aren't aware of your situations. So that's why I think it would be good. But yeah, I like this ship. Um, let's move on to the captain build. So, the Atlanta captain I use doesn't actually end up taking concealment. Um, I think it's pretty important to have concealment. It gives you the ability to sneak around a little bit easier, but I prefer getting everything into damage focused uh, points. So, if you wanted concealment from this build, I would probably suggest taking away Demolition Expert and Incoming Fire Alert, and then you'd get concealment. That's probably just as good of a build as this one, but I just prefer that little bit extra into the into damage that that would give me. Um, you'll notice that AFT pretty much required, giving you 13.3 kilometers, and I actually end up taking IFHE. Now, a lot of people don't recommend that skill anymore, but I personally love consistent output of damage over getting random fire chance dot damage stuff and you'll notice we still got fires so it's not like i i really believe ifhe is just that powerful that it's still worth it even after it just kills your fire chance by half um which you can see we still have a five and a half percent fire chance which isn't bad for a ship with this kind of firepower but you'll notice 26 millimeters of armor actually allows you to get over the hump that is tier 7 battleships 26 millimeters of armor everywhere so the reason I take it is so that I can pen all of this instead of just this. You can see how that would be make a huge difference in your damage output. And you still get some fires. It's not like you don't get any fires. Um, so that's why I take it. I take it on as long as you patch that, that threshold of battleship armor. So at tier 7, it's 26 millimeters. At tier 8, it's 32 millimeters. I... My, my goal when I take this is to cross that threshold of the typical battleship armor at my same tier. That's basically my thought process behind it. Uh, BFT, you know, pretty simple. It just reduces your reload, makes it better. Uh, demo Expert to get some of that fire back. Again, reload, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, preventive Maintenance is nice because it helps keep your ship from being knocked out, basically. Uh, sometimes HE shells can knock your engine out, or the rudder out, or your guns especially. Your guns die very quickly in this ship, so taking a skill like that really, 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 really helps you uh, keep your damage per minute going and your ship maneuverable. you notice that's why we also take engine room protection as well. And these are pretty standard upgrades. Um, aiming, I mean, there's nothing really good here to take for an Atlanta, so I just take aiming. And then propulsion mod, I just love the ability to accelerate quicker. Um, the rudder shift is already pretty decent at, well, 8.4 is not bad, but it, it doesn't feel, it's not that great, but it doesn't feel that bad, um, as long as you're predicting what's going to happen. Um, but maybe rudder is better for you if you like to be more a maneuverable ship when you're going. Um, I find Atlanta and ships like Atlanta that like to sit behind islands and be stationary just farming for a while. Propulsion mod is nice for when you just need to get going again pretty good um 
yeah, so that's kind of the way I play my Atlanta. I think this ship is awesome. I love the design of this ship, if I can just talk about how premium ships in an ideal world would be designed. They would be different, unique, and fun to play, but not overpowered compared to their tech tree line. Um, so that's why I love a ship like this. It's really cool. And just as a quick note, in uh, the new commander changes in 10.0 update, Atlanta will be keeping its 13.3 kilometer range, despite uh, AFT being removed. Whereas Flint will only have its 11.1 kilometer range. So in the new update, I think Flint's not really gonna be that playable. <laughs> I really don't think. Um, and Atlanta, it'll be it'll be a still fun ship to play. So if you've got an Atlanta, be happy about it because it's gonna be much better than the Flint now. Um, you know, I didn't really use the 13 kilometers of range in this game, but it's really helpful when you get up tiered into tier nines. Really, really, really helpful. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.